we have major breaking news out of the Pac-12 this afternoon. You know, the funny thing is, we were chatting on Twitter this morning with a bunch of people about the Pac-12 and the Big 12. And it seems like there is this vitriol from the Pac-12 fan base to the Big 12 fan base and this arrogance going back and forth. And I don't understand why we do this to each other. You don't have to you don't have to rip the Pac-12 to feel better about the Big 12 and vice versa. There is no doubt and let's clear this up. The title of this show today is Separating Truth from Lies about the Big 12 and the Pac-12. Let's make something very clear. The Pac-12 and its presidents through emissaries back channels relationships have absolutely been exploring membership, joining, moving, whatever word you want to use from the Pac-12 to the Big 12. It's not in doubt anymore. And the idea that that's somehow a sin Mm -hmm. or that you should go to college football hell because you were exploring all of your options. Let me ask you this, no matter who your school is, and if you're a Utah fan, great. If you're a Utah fan, do you want your president to not be exploring all possible options when you know that you are going to struggle to land a significant media deal? that you are going to be, I don't know what, $70 million at a minimum, probably closer to $80 million behind the Big Ten. You don't want your president exploring the best financial and stability partners for your, your university. So if you are President Robbins at Arizona, who today, on the record, talked about his quote unquote affinity is what he told John Wilner at the at the San Jose Mercury News. Right. This is a direct quote from President Robert Robbins at Arizona. Quote, he painted a nuanced picture for Arizona citing the school's proximity to the Big 12 footprint and that the league's powerhouse basketball brands as the basis for, quote, some affinities. <laughs> so President Robbins at Arizona openly saying... He has affinities, whatever the hell that word is supposed to mean, and however it will get twisted and mangled, he has some, he likes the Big 12. Right. He likes the Big 12. He talked about how, um, you know, that that he, he has said, this is President Robbins to John Wilner, you see it on the screen. Asked about the speculation over the future of the conference, Robbins rejected notion that schools, including Arizona, would bolt for the Big 12. Now, if that's where it stopped, that'd be fine, but that's not. Would bolt for the Big 12 prior to being presented with a media rights proposal. So what did we really just say? That they're waiting for the media rights proposal to come out of executive committee at the Pac-12, and then they're going to make a decision on if they're staying or if they're going. Seems pretty straightforward to understand. And then listen to the quote from President Robbins at Arizona. Quote, it's heavily dependent on Klyavkov and his team negotiating a good media deal. Like, are, are you, I mean, you, you can't spin this in any other way but for it to say for us to stay competitive. He is straight up saying, if the media deal is crap, we're gone. Facts. That's what he's saying. Yes. But somehow that's either, you know, he's a traitor I saw on Twitter today, or President Robbins in Arizona is not being a traitor. He's doing his job. Mm -hmm. He he has a, a responsibility to his constituents, to his students, to his donors, to his, you know, his employees, his trustees, to make the best decision. So him sitting here saying, hey, yeah, you know what? We are, you know, we, we're we absolutely waiting on this on this thing from George on this media deal. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But you get a large swath of Pac-12 fans who get all pissed and say, oh, they've never talked to him. We would never do that. Well, if you didn't do that, you're being derelict in your responsibilities. We've been reporting on this show for a month that most, most of these conversations, because I do believe there are many that are happening directly. Right. Most of these conversations are back-channel conversations. Facts. We even gave you the example we were told that... 
Tom Homo was working with Utah to, you know, to find a path forward. Hey, what's it look like if you guys come to the Big 12? How could we make scheduling work? What would the revenue look like? All of these plans are in place. You have a, a, a clear direction in the Big 12. You have a pro rata that exists with ESPN and their media deal. So if you bring in Pac-12 membership, they all get equal, they all get equal bang from mm-hmm. ESPN. Like, I mean, the groundwork is laid. I understand the academic side of it. I am not sitting here telling you I think this is going to happen. But the thing that you simply must realize in in some way, shape, or form, you simply must realize that they're talking. And, And the question is, why is that a bad thing? Why are you so upset as a Pac-12 fan that your president or other presidents are talking to the Big 12? Because that's what I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of, it, it is kind of crazy. I mean, I don't know what you would you would, you would would expect them to be doing or not to be doing. I mean, it quite literally is their job to explore all options. But but I think this bit about, about you know, hey, we're, we're not going to make any decisions on whether we're moving or not until, or whether we're joining or moving or whatever verbiage you want to use. You yeah. know, we're not going to make any decisions until the media rights deal from Georgie Poo has been presented. I mean, that makes perfect sense. I mean, we've been saying that for how long? I mean, that's not, you know, it's kind of funny. Like, that's not really breaking news on this program, at least. And I know that there's been, you know, some other folks out there reporting the same thing. Like, it's not surprising. It's not somehow new. It's not somehow breaking news. And I think that that George Klyovkov has to get this deal done. And, and you know, hey, Dr., you know, Robert can come out and 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 say, hey, like we think that we're going to get a good deal, and there's a lot of value in our schools, and everything's hunky dory. Like that's what that's what everyone's been saying. You can keep saying that, but the the frankly, until I see that, I'm not going to believe it because the landscape doesn't suggest that same narrative that you're trying to tell. The landscape suggests you have nowhere else to go and that you're being pigeonholed into ESPN and Amazon yeah. who want what they want, not what you want. And I think that's the tough part. But I also look at I also look at like what Michael Crow, the president of Arizona State said. And generally as a rule, Michael Crow has been a bit of a buffoon. He is an arrogant jerk that most people don't respect. Right. He's a guy who does not communicate well. He is absolutely that guy that stands above you and looks down his nose. Ask ask people at GCU what he said about GCU and how he's treated GCU. And Michael Crow's a bit of a a, a bit of an arrogant. He bird, likes if himself you will. some yeah, Michael he, Crow. He does. But look what he said today. Um, and I want to make sure that we give credit to the state press. Uh, at Arizona State, very well done, really appreciate that. Look at what he said here. According to the state press, we are close to knowing where we're going to be, and I think we're close to a deal. I think that the Pac-12 media rights became more complicated with the departure of USC and UCLA. Okay, we all agree on that, we all agree. The media rights became more complicated also, as things always do, because markets go like this, they're up and then they're down and then they're up and then they're down. But we have fabulous sports teams and the remaining teams, we're going to get a good offer. We're in the final stages of that process. <laughs> and the only problem with that, of course, is media markets are not up and down. You got beat is what happened here, right? And what, what you know, Crow is not saying here is that Brett Yormark went to market before you did and got your money. Bro, you're suggesting that the sports media rights market went down like the economy or like the real estate yeah, market did. That that's did not, not happen. That's not what happened here, man. You got beat to market. So now you're in a situation where everyone spent their money and they don't want to spend their money with you. And we haven't even gotten to the concept that Brett Yormark's product uh, as far as like TV, as far as desire, as far as want to, when you combine basketball and football is more valuable than yours. And and look, I get it. Yesterday on the program, that pissed everybody off. That pissed West Virginia fan off. That pissed Utah fan yes, off. That pissed did. everybody off. Yes, like, I, and I get it. I understand. I understand it's frustrating. But at the same time, you have to understand that the Big 12 has the upper hand. The Big 12 is sitting here in the catbird seat just waiting 
uh, uh, to see what goes down here. And so to me, what's really funny is on one hand, you've got Arizona's president saying, hey, we're going to wait and see you know, uh, on any decisions until the media rights deal is presented. And then on the other hand, you've got Arizona State saying, hey, look, we think we're in a great place. Our schools are valuable. Yes, things got a little more complicated after SC and UCLA decided to leave. But nevertheless, we feel like our brands are really good and valuable. We're going to be just fine. But what else did President Crow say? President, President Crow said, quote, there have been no discussions with the Big 12 Conference on moving. He didn't say no discussions with the Big 12 Conference. And by the way, we sat around this table today, the three of us, Mrs. Monty, Jake, and I, mm -hmm. debating the importance of the word moving here. Mm -hmm. Because it's my opinion, that is not an accidental word. What makes you say that? Because nobody says, hey, we're moving to the Big 12. Nobody says that. Right. The, the, I would agree with the that. The language in the, what's, what's the word you always like to use? The, nom the proper nomenclature. The proper nomenclature, Donnie. Yeah. Donnie, the proper nomenclature <laughs> is we're joining the Big 12, right? Like Donnie, that. Please. Yeah. That's the language that we all know and love. Right. But yet here, you have, you have President Crow of Arizona State saying, we didn't talk to the Big 12 conference on moving. I mean, there's been discussions uh. between everyone everywhere on all things related to where our conference is going and where stuff's going to end up and what's happening. We are committed to the Pac-12. Okay, so so wait, let's break this down. The first the first sentence is where it gets really tricky, right? Because I agree that this whole conversation, I think it's a valid one, around the term moving. Moving is not the proper nomenclature, Donnie. Moving is not the 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 word that is ever used to describe a school joining another conference, right? We didn't say BYU moved from Independence to the Big 12. We didn't say that Texas That's and Oklahoma right. moved to the SEC. What did we say? We said, hey, these programs joined the SEC. They joined the Big 12. It's a really interesting it's, choice of words. And, and I get it. I get it. There are a lot of people out there who are going to say, oh, well, you're just nitpicking and, you know, you know you're know, you mincing on his words and you're, you're, you're being too harsh. And, hey, maybe we are. I, I'm open to that conversation. But I thought, it was a, I thought it was a really interesting point. I don't know if we're right or wrong on this choice of term. Yeah. I know that that's not the word that most people use. So I thought when he used it in that way, being who he is at Arizona State, I thought that was really interesting. And, and then, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Listen. Listen. You know what, Ginder? Maybe you're right. Maybe it's semantics. Maybe it is. And like I said, Mrs. I'm open to that. By the way, Mrs. Monty full on said it's semantics. Hey, guys. Yeah. The, the word moving means absolutely nothing different than joining. And she is a lot more commonsensical than I am, mm -hmm. frankly. Um, so, hey, maybe it is. Maybe that's exactly what it is. But what I'm saying is I don't believe people that are educated to the level of Michael Crow the president of Arizona State, speak out of turn. He gave an interview to the school newspaper. Mm -hmm. That was not by accident. No, it was not. Number one. Number two, these lines are prepared. These lines are absolutely rehearsed, prepared, filtered, gone over. The word moving, in my opinion, was not an, an accident. Just like nothing else was an accident. And that's why I say, I, I don't know. I think, I, I think that... You know, the terminology moving is is interesting. That's what I'm going to say. I, I can't, we certainly cannot sit here and say that he is using the word moving because he doesn't want to say joining the Big 12. We can't definitively can't say that. Can't say that. But I do think it's interesting. I also think it's interesting that Arizona and ASU, like we reported last week, are not on the same page very clearly by the differences in their statements today. You have one. You have one president saying, "Hey, very different you know, statements, you, like, right?" Like one president in Arizona is saying, "Hey, you know, we're not going to make any decisions on anything until we see a media rights deal." And then you have another one at ASU saying, "Everything's hunky dory, and our schools are valuable, and everything's going to be fine." Like that's yeah. two different stances. And yeah, so, it is. So, so that's why I say, like, I just think it's w what what can't be lost is that both of these guys chose to speak today. Both spoke on the same day. Yep. That's not by accident. So they're talking. They're just, they just have different opinions on what's going on. And I think it is very clear in my opinion. I think it is very clear 
that all 281 of you here need to hit the like button, please. That really helps the channel grow. Mm -hmm. Hit that like button. And I think the other thing that's very clear is I feel like we've been pretty spot on with what we've been telling you. Um, And that is that a lot of these communications, they're being back channeled. They are through relationships that are in place. I don't think that George Klyovkov has talked to all 10 remaining members of the Pac-12. I just don't believe that. I think that whether it's President Kosse at Washington, President Crow at ASU, hey President guys. Robbins at Arizona. Hey, guys. It, I just think that there are relationships in place that allow them to effectively communicate, engage interest, engage availability, engage opportunity. That's as, that's as simple as I can say it. You don't hire a guy like Brett Yormark who has come in and by all accounts operated as smoothly as possible. You don't do a guy like that and then think that he's going to put people like these presidents in awkward situations by having, you know, direct conversations with them if they're uncomfortable with that. I I mean, you, you can't look at these comments by President Robbins at Arizona. You can't look at these comments and have any other feeling, any other feeling than that he has had direct conversations. Yeah. Right? Like he, he's talking about how it's heavily dependent. And, and again, these are not guys that speak off the top of their head. Yeah. Heavily dependent on Klyovkov and his team negotiating a good media, media deal for us to stay competitive. When asked about would Arizona bolt for the Big 12 prior to being presented a media rights proposal, his answer was it's heavily dependent on Klyovkov and his team negotiating a good deal. As we've been saying so, for how long? So but- are you really <laughs> telling me that President Robbins is saying that without knowing what's on the other side of the fence? He Absolutely, he has scoped out the Big 12's green grass. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, And I don't think, again, why is that a bad thing? This is what I can't get explained. Yeah. Why is it a bad thing that Pac-12 presidents are exploring their options? Why is it a bad thing to say, hey, it may be a good idea to look at going to the Big 12? Why is that, like, disrespectful? Because that's how I, that's kind of the sentiment I feel like, you know, we get out of Pac-12 country. That, that it's like, well, we would never go to the Big 12. Why the hell are you going to the Big 12? Why is our president looking at, at, at other propositions? You know, like... Why, why, why would you do that? Why, like, that's the sentiment. And I, I, you know, like I saw reporting today, I I think it was, uh, uh, Michael Crow. I think it was Michael Crow said it. I have to double check, but I believe Michael Crow said something to the effect of why would you, why would you move, you know, conferences? Why would you join another conference for only a couple million dollars more a year? And it's like, yeah, sure. It's a couple million dollars more a year. Absolutely. But what really is it? It's more reliability. It's more TV viewership. Ultimately, what you're not talking about is the fact that Big 12 teams are probably going to make 50 a year after the tournament's all said and done, and you're not. Like, that's what we're not talking about. And that, to me, is what's really interesting is, like, you get this you get this sort of frustration and anger out of the fan base of the Pac-12, but then when you start talking about guys like, you know, Michael Crow. Or, you know, whoever the hell yeah. you want to point to in the Pac-12 who have this bias and have this I'm better than Eunice to them. Um, it's like they don't want to talk about the fact that it's not just about the TV it, deal. But but again, to your point, it's not a couple million dollars. Yeah. It's it's it, it, in the TV deal. Let's say we all know what the baseline deal in the Big 12 is 31.7 million. Right. Let's say that they both get 31.7 million just by some miraculousness. The Pac-12 comes up and finds $31 million, right? But look how many Big 12 teams are in the are in the tournament. Look how many, you know, look at TCU going to the college football playoff, right? Like you have all this extra money coming into the conference now that isn't available to the Pac-12, right? So even if you even if you get an e- equal TV deal, it's still significantly more money. It is a significantly better opportunity to get into the NCAA tournament, to get into the college football playoff, even in an expanded environment. Right. Because the Big 12 is a better conference 
it's more stable. You you have guys from around the country that make these decisions about who's into the college football playoff and who's into the NIT versus the NCAA tournament. Gonzaga. Those guys, you know what? Those guys are watching games yeah. on television. If your games aren't on television, if your games are on Apple TV, if your games are on Amazon, you're not going to have the eyeballs. You're not going to have the reach you need to prosper. So it's not just a couple million dollars a year. Yeah. It's tens of of millions of dollars a year. Yes. And that doesn't include corporate sponsors. That does not include the Toyota Center. That does not include, like Michael Crow talked about, the need to upgrade their arena. It doesn't include the infrastructure and the money and the donations and the the boosters to upgrade your facilities, which are are, are massive. And oh, by the way, this doesn't even include recruiting. Yeah. Think about the, the the recruiting value in reach. If mom can't watch little Jimmy play a basketball game, is he going to go to a Pac-12 <coughs> school? <coughs> no. Nope. Well, no, he's probably not. He's probably going to go to the Big 12 because he can go to Kansas. If you can get into, I mean, pick your point. If you can get into Arizona, mm -hmm. and let's say a kid is deciding between a Pac-12 Arizona and a Big 12 Kansas for basketball. And he knows that Kansas basketball is going to regularly be on Fox and they're going to be in the NCAA tournament. He's going to Kansas. There, there's no question about that. Yes. So I don't think this is as simple as a couple of million dollars. Yeah, it's not just a TV deal. No, it's it not. is It is a, a an economic ecosystem that you have to feed, that you have to take care of, that you have to nurture. And and yes. frankly, I just don't see that the Pac-12 is in position to nurture an ecosystem that allows them to thrive. Agreed. That, Completely agree. That's just me. Yep. Um, that's how I feel about it. All right, let's get your comments in here. Thank you. Hey, by the way, a change to the comments today. Mm -hmm. um, we have made the comments members only. Now, we had quite the discussion about this in our members only Instagram chat. We did. Because we have been getting complaints that we have not been reading member comments. Mm -hmm. So for the next week or two, we are going to make the comment section members only. If you want to comment, you need to join the channel membership. Because we want to take care of the people who support the hundreds now of people who are members of this channel that support our channel. We want to take care of you guys. We want you to comment. We want to read your comments. We want you to feel like we value you because guess what? We do. We do. We may be better looking and more intelligent than you, but we still value <laughs> your... I should probably just read comments now. Uh, all right, let's do it. Jazz Perch one says eight games for John ja Morant. Wow, happy Wednesday, fellas. Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that coming up in about 40 minutes here on the Monty Show. C. Kaufman, uh, good to see you. That's not enough games for Ja. C. Kaufman also says U of A and ASU presidents had some interesting comments. Indeed. But did they misspeak? No. I don't think they did. No, because like you said, I mean, they don't talk off the top of their head. It's not like this is TMZ rolling up to you at the, on the street corner. You no. know, I mean, this is... Again, I mean, Michael Crow's doing an interview with his newspaper at the school. Like, this isn't, this isn't like, let's not beat around the bush. I mean, this was planned. Like, and, and that's why I say, like, you know, this, this whole conversation around moving versus joining, I think that, you know, knowing that he did it with the school paper, knowing that it was planned, knowing that there's a bunch of strategy in it, it, it like, it kind of makes me lean towards he chose that word, but, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Kenneth says, are you guys going to do your research? It's really obvious you know very little about the Big 12, which leads you to make stuff up. Okay, please do. Yeah, and, and see, so this I is mean, the same guy. This is West Virginia guy from yesterday. So you're so much smarter, and you are so much more well-educated than we are. Please, Kenneth, inform us about our stupidity and our lies and our brokenness. Our, our souls are really broken because we are lying, fibbing. Well, efforts. we're sinners. We're, we're sinners. <laughs> And we have asked oh. Jesus Christ <laughs> to put the Big 12 in our soul. Jackass. Get, get in our soul, Jesus Christ. In God's name, image, and Please likeness. Please put still water Oklahoma in my bosom, God bless. son of a... Anyway, God bless. The point, the probably too much. But the point is... God bless. Please, Kenneth. Please. Let us know. Kenneth says... My guess would be you'll just make stuff up to fit your views. 
<laughs> they stated a lot last night about the Big 12 teams, teams they knew very little about. By the way, I don't mean to be a dick here. Well, actually, I do. When you say knew very little about, it's not N-E-W. That's like a new car. Um, you want to say K-N-E-W, like, you know, but I know you're smarter than we are, but I, I mean, I'm just pointing out, I'm trying Bro, to help. What are you talking you about, man? Let's, let's, let's give him a free pass. He's a little emotional right now. Okay, let's keep going. Kenneth also says, so they are good at making stuff up just to push their BS. Just like their BS they push about TV ratings when a simple Google search will pull up a service that publishes e each week. Wow. I mean, it's I mean, not I like, don't know how. It's like, not like we have, I don't know, a subscription from Nielsen that sends us all of the TV stuff every week. I'm, I know. Cool. Get crazy. Get crazy. Kenneth says they also put out BS about school academic ratings. Well, again, again, I'm just telling you the institution that, that essentially runs AAU ratings, they're the ones we refer to. Because and we put every the picture on the screen, because I mean, everybody like, you know. uses that as the gold standard. I mean, but, don't play intramurals, brother. You know, dude, you need to take a chill pill. Like, come on now, come on, man. You can't call me stupid and then have a grammatical error in the tw in the comment where you're calling me stupid. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> everybody is outraged. <laughs> you know, I oh know. Oh my god, dude. You know. All right, Cowboy Rev says Big 12 and NFL are partnering on a pro day for all Big 12 teams and will be on NFL Network. Nice, I like it. I like that. Uh, Patrick Bourne says, Bright Yormark has sealed a deal to have the whole Big 12 NFL combine at Dallas Cowboys facilities on NFL Network. Yeah, baby, adding value to the conference. This is what I mean, right? Like, and, and, and I hadn't seen this until you guys started to comment about it. But Oh, God, here come the DMs, by the way. Go ahead, please. Yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me yeah. to espouse. So, yeah, I mean, this is what Brett Yormark does. I mean, is this any surprise? I mean, w w you know, w we played all that sound from his press conference last week about, you know, him talking about how he, he loves to take over Kansas City and they have a great relationship. This is just yet another ploy at that type of uh, uh, of of strategy. I mean, you're, you're, you're basically saying, hey, I want to partner with one of the most powerful businessmen uh in our footprint as your mark would say right with mm -hmm. uh the the skeeter circumciser in jerry jones so yeah i want to partner with jerry jones he's got a lot of money he's really powerful uh and i want to have all our pro days at at jerry world i mean that's really smart man i mean honestly that is really good business i i'm not surprised that someone like brett your mark would put this together at all yeah Look, and if you can get, if you can get, and I believe I could be wrong, but I think that's for next year, not this year, next year. Mm -hmm. If you can get all 14 teams to participate in that, good luck. I mean, it's genius. It's absolutely genius in my mind. Nathan Sharp says, I don't get why people stay on a chat if it makes them so a a Ron exact a angry. He said, I don't get it. I have no idea. Yeah, I Patrick Bourne says Arizona sounds like they are ready to jump. Well, I I don't even think that they're ready to jump. I think they are ready to to explore the possibilities. Yeah, because you can't take that much of a financial hit. You can't. It 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 doesn't mean. I, I mean, I think what what, what President Robin know, said is spot on. Hey, yes, we we we're not going to make any decisions until we know what we're working with, and basically until we know. What George Klyovkov is presenting to us in the media deal, are we talking 25 a year, 22 a year, 58 a year? What are we talking about? And that like, sounds real to me. Yeah, I mean, that just sounds reasonable. We've told you that they are trying to structure this deal in a way that they believe they can get all 10 members to sign a grant of rights. And so they know, they know what the TV deal is. They yes. know what the numbers are. They know what the distribution is. They are trying to negotiate through their executive committee to see what that what that final structure of that contract is going to look like. Because at the end of the day, it's simply a contract between ten members and the and the institution. Because remember, if, so and I think this often gets overlooked. Just because, and, and I'll just use ESPN as an example. So let's say that ESPN wanted to pay you know thirty million dollars a year. We'll just just leave it at a nice yep. even number. ESPN says to Georgie Poo, "Hey, here's thirty million dollars a year." per school for the next five years. Okay, that doesn't mean 
that each school is going to get thirty million a year. You guys understand that, right? That all that means is that ESPN is going to cut a check to George Klyovkov in the conference for that amount of money. Now, what George has to go and do is go and talk to all these different schools. And again, there's a power structure in place: ASU, Oregon, Washington, um, and see. Okay, how are we going to slice this pie? up like yes so does oregon want you know 50 a year and then that means that that you know washington state or oregon state gets you know 15 a year like that's where they're at now that's so when when brett when robbins says hey we need to see what it actually looks like for us that's what he means we need to know what the number is for our school before we start making decisions about the big 12. And you look at this comment from President Robbins at Arizona. I would love to be closer to the Big Ten or SEC, but being closer to the Big 12 is more realistic. Klyovkov has done a great job working on the media deal. I think he'll bring us something that's good enough. We're hearing that terminology more now. Good enough. Right. Yep. And he also said, President Robbins, um, it is heavily dependent um, on George Klyovkov to... Um, you know, and his team negotiating a good media deal for us to stay competitive. Yeah. When he was asked about jumping to the Big 12, it all depends on that deal. Yeah, and I don't think that's some ridiculous answer. I think that's pretty spot on. And my opinion is, I think President Robbins was just being real about it. It's all going to depend on the money we're going to be able to make at the Pac-12. If we can't make, make enough money, we're going to the Big 12. Right. It, it, it just is the reality of it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And the question that I always run into is, why do people get so upset about guys like President Robbins or President Crow or President Kose or any of these presidents in the Pac-10 doing their homework and their due diligence? Because again, even if you expand, you're not going to make more money because those are G5 schools. You bring in Colorado State, Boise State, San Diego State, SMU, pick the G5. That's existing. That's not expanding. And I I I don't even think I don't even think it's controversial right. at this point. You know like I I just I don't think it's at all controversial that 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 this is how it's going. I really don't. Um let's see. Kurt Peter says I think Colorado is lining up their options to exercise if and when needed. What are the odds uh, Cleaver Cock comes with a decent deal? I'm sorry, did you say Cleaver Cock? What are you, Mus? Dude, Cleaver Cock is a new one. <laughs> Kurt, congratulations. <laughs> um, I think, again, I can only go with what we've been told. Yeah. You know, our, our sources in TV have told us that the Pac-12 is at $22 million, that they're having trouble finding a way. That's why you, you keep hearing about Amazon and Apple together because they're trying to get more money. But those two are competitors, and I don't think Apple's going to buy in if Amazon's part of it. Right. I think Amazon wants a game of the week on Friday nights. That's how much money are you willing to pay for that? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I, I look at Apple TV. I mean, they're getting crushed on MLS soccer right now. <laughs> like, nobody is watching. Nobody is buying. Better send those refunds. It's a very challenging market space right now because you're the last one and you don't have Southern California. It makes it very difficult. Yes. It really does. David Sebesta, what's up, David? They're secondary schools in secondary markets. They, it, like Colorado State's one, Fresno State's another one where the alumni always get upset when we say it, but are you really a school that's worthy of a, of a P5 spot? And okay, so maybe you are. Let me ask you this. Does Fresno State or Colorado State or SMU or San Diego State? San Diego State, again, geographically, I think is very needed in the Pac-12. So SMU, Colorado State, Boise State. Do any of those three move the needle, if you will, become a game changer? Obviously be, not. Be a difference maker. Any of them. Because I'm telling you they're not. Yeah. I'm I'm just telling you they're not. I, I don't see Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I I, I think it you can't <laughs> and and we kinda had this discussion late last week and you know, like I was mentioning on the show yesterday, we did a short on it, like you know, the Pac-12 adding a G5 is not expanding. That's just sort of surviving. That's kind of band-aiding the situation that you're in. And, and and I'm not saying it's wrong to do it. I, I mean, again, as you just said, like, I, I'm with you. I, I think that they need to be 
adding San Diego State specifically, but obviously, you know, you can look at some other options, you know, SMU, Fresno State, like you guys know the names. So, yeah, I think that's a process that needs to play out, but that's not going to play out until this media rights deal is done. And whether you agree or disagree with that, at this point, it kind of feels like that's irrelevant because they're going to go ahead and push forward with this media rights deal. I agree if you were going to add San Diego State and you were going to add these other schools, you should have done that before you started writing a media rights deal. But that's not how they looked at yes. it. And, and, and so that's why they're only at 22 a year, in my opinion. Yep, totally agree. Don't forget that Bucked Up is the official energy partner of the Monty Show. Get to buckedup.com. You can uh, get 20% off your purchase at buckedup.com by using the promo code Monty at checkout. Uh, get 20% off. But again, in the comment section below, uh, there's a link for free samples and a free shaker, and it is the single greatest shaker you will ever use. I love my bucked up shaker. I love the fact that, uh, and I show people this all the time, I love the fact that the the blender ball thingamajiggers are connected to the post that's connected to the lid. I'm the guy. They wind up on the floor or in the bottom of the dishwasher or having Betsy, they wind up somewhere that they're not supposed to be but with this with this shaker cup they're attached i love that yeah it's it's chunky it's a big cup so you you can't break it i love What's up, it big bro? and you get three free samples of your choice i would tell you do the pre-workout because the pre-workout is a great pre-workout from bucked up great ingredients they have high stem my wife does not like high stem which means a lot of caffeine or a lot of stimulant. She likes the low stim. They make it in their energy drinks. My wife is a white can drinker, uh, uh, bucked up energy. It's 100 milligrams of caffeine. Whatever you need, they've got a solution for you. Get it for free at the link below in the description. It says free samples and a free shaker, buckedup.com. Use the promo code MONTY. Uh, or click the link for a free uh, shaker and three samples. Or if you go into any of the bucked up stores, like our guy Roger Sales did, mm -hmm. uh, I believe he went into Orem, uh, sent us a picture, hooked it up. Boom. Absolutely, Roger. We appreciate Boom. you doing that. Tell me you heard about it on the Monty Show. They'll give you a free uh, bucked up energy drink. Uh, speaking of Roger, look at that. There he is. He says, I haven't watched live in a few days, so great time at your birthday party. Won a great golf shirt. Roger, there appreciate you, you being there, there man. There you go. He says, let's do, let's do more events. The funny thing is, we had the big 5-0 birthday bash, and everybody's like, hey, man, can we do an event a week? Hey, Monty, can we can we do no. an event every day? Nope, can't do it. <laughs> Cannot <laughs> do it. Uh, Andrew H., what's up, Andrew? He says, Smurf Turp worth at least $42 million. Nah. Exactly. Exactly right. Gumby Extra Regular. The Pac-12 adding a G5 is just surviving. Now do the Big 12. Agreed. Well, Agreed. But that's the thing, man. If, if you if you are the Pac-12, the hardest part, and the reason I think so many Pac-12 supporters don't want to talk about the fact that their presidents are talking to the Big 12 is because if you just lose one, I mean, if you lose Oregon State, Washington State, okay, if you Still lose though. any of the four corners, if you lose, I mean, either of the Arizonas, Colorado, Utah, I don't think you can fix that. I don't see a way you can replace that. Certainly, if you lose Oregon and Washington, who I think are the two biggest brands in the conference, I don't see you replace that. Yeah, no, I agree. And there's, I, and there's just no way. And I think the problem is, not that I disagree with that at all, I think, unfortunately, because of the fact that your numbers are limited here, you can't afford to lose Oregon or Washington State, Oregon State or Washington State. Like, like, like even though those are secondary brands, because you've only got 10 schools left, you can't afford to lose them. And that's totally where I agree. think... That's where I think if you want to make if you want to play the San Diego State SMU or Fresno State card, okay, we can play that card from that angle. But I, I don't know. I just think you got to get this media deal done because once you do that, then the conversation can sort of take this natural progressive step forward to, hey, okay, where do we go from here? What you know, what can we do about? you know, bringing more reliability to the conference. Who can we add? What, like, you know what I mean? It's almost like you got to get the car started. Then you can start driving down the street. They, and they just haven't done that yet. That's the trouble. Yeah, totally agree. And I, I think what's so interesting is it's like, it's like somebody's, you know, like kicking your dog or something, man. Like you're, you're so upset about it. Yes, yes, yes. Again, if you're a Utah fan, Washington, Oregon, Washington State, Oregon State, no matter what your flavor is, if your president is not looking at this stuff, 
that's when you should be mad. Concept, you and your sticky fingers probably find hard to grasp. I don't, yeah, I don't understand that. The macho man, what's up, my guy, says Utah won't leave. They will die with the Pac-12. And I'm really worried for Utah on that because I just, I probably overvalue Kyle Whittingham. Everybody tells me that. But I look at what Witt and this Utah football program have done. I look at the women's basketball program. I want the running news to be better, but... Dude, Utah men's basketball is not great. It just has not been. I don't know how you explain it, but it is what it is, right? I want the best for for Utah. It's a great school. It's a great campus. Kyle Whittingham's a phenomenal coach with a really good coaching staff. I feel like they deserve to compete at the top of the college football world. Are people myring? But there's just this... I don't know what it's not arrogance necessarily. It's you're just thick skulled, dude. Like yes. you, you just won't, you won't get over it. And yeah. I, and I, I worry that you lose. I think in the leadership circle, it's arrogance. I don't think that Kyle Whittingham walks around every day as this super arrogant guy and, and, you know, thinking he's holy. No, I don't now. think so either. I, but I, but I do think that, you know, I, I, what I'll say about Witt, and this is just based on his comments. You know, I don't know the guy personally. I'm not going to pretend to. You know, I'm I just I just don't. But but based on what the way he talks about NIL and sort of the new new age in college athletics, I do think Witt is somebody who wishes NIL didn't exist. I think that he thinks uh, that NIL is not great for for college athletics. He's one of these guys that thinks that you're you're uh, a student athlete, not an athlete student, you know? And 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 I get that. And I and I even respect his opinion, but the reality of the situation is uh you know, the, the a lot of these guys are athletes that just need to pass the class. They're not trying to be, you know, uh academic superstars if you know what I mean. So so for me, I just I, I just think that Utah struggles to to be as relevant as some of these other schools and other conferences because they don't play the game. They don't care about NIL as much as, you know, Alabama does or as much as, you know, whoever you want to point to does. And that is part of the issue that I think is always present, whether it's on the forefront or the back burner, it's always present in the pack, specifically at Utah. And I think it hurts their ability to 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 get media rights. It hurts their ability to to do the things that other really strong P5 New York 6 New Year's 6 caliber yeah. teams can yeah. do and that's frustrating. Dude, it's amazing how many angry fans there are about it. Like I I am I'm shocked by it. I'm absolutely shocked by it. Mr. Preston says bucked up he has a pink lemonade. I tried it yesterday. It was smooth. I don't hate the pink lemonade. I'm a big lemonade drinker, man. I I Yeah, so is the floor. Yeah, so dude it's one minute before the show, and we've Literally. been here in Arizona. We're, we're, we're at spring training in, in Tempe, Mesa, Arizona for the week. It's quite nice. And so, like, we've been having lemonade before yeah. the show. Yeah, kind of in the vibe. You know, it's a little warmer out. I thought, hey, you know, maybe get those, some lemonade from the store. Like, so it's good. Jake's been bringing me a glass of lemonade. Right. And I sp- I bounced this off of a hard tile floor. <laughs> <laughs> the glass didn't break. The lemonade went everywhere. Yeah. It was shockingly not good. And not and Mrs. Monty's like over here working on a call. Like, you know, the, the oh, in-laws are here like shit. doing their work. And I'm just dropping glasses all over the place. You know. Like a small child. But I agree, uh, Preston, the uh, the pink lemonade is very good. What I do am. we think of this members-only chat thing we got going on today? Do we, Are we liking it so far? Do you guys feel like there's more... You know, more more comments are getting read. Like, what are we? What are we? What's what's the vibe here, man? What are, what are, what are we thinking? Yeah, we made this change because so many people have been complaining that we have not been reading enough of the members' comments. Mm-hmm. We get thousands of comments per show, thousands and thousands of comments. So, I would love your thoughts on it. Uh, Andrew H uh, says, "Can they add New Mexico in just basketball so the three corners map doesn't have a hole in it?" So, uh, seems fair. Yeah, I mean uh, symmetry. <laughs> You, you because know. it's all part of the plan. You know. uh, Tumasta says SMU uh, doesn't save you. No, nah. they don't. I agree, too. I think that's exactly right. Uh, Mike P says lemonade flavors are great depression gray garbage. Really? Bro, what does that even mean? I love lemonade. I love it. We, we've we been, I'm a big zero sugar guy, so we've been drinking this Minute Made zero sugar lemonade as well. Yeah. I love that stuff. Love it. I will say, interestingly, though, 
on this trip, we have cooked a little bit more than we usually do because we have more time. But I, I got to tell you that I, I, I'm much more of a home cooker now. Like, well, like, you know, when the women are around and, and <laughs> cook and clean. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I'm much more of a home cooker. Like we've had some really good, I'm a huge sweet potato fan. So we've had some really good sweet potato dinners and mm -hmm. I'm all about it, dude. We're going to top golf tonight though. Mm. We are going to top. Golf. I'm excited to start playing golf, dude. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I totally am. Harry Ginder says, I'm happy knowing, uh, Anna Marie, uh, hmm, hmm, is looking Kase. That's not her name is looking out for UW. I'm not going to, I'm not playing your games today. Ginder. Um, <laughs> T Lawrence Gragston says San Diego, uh, state keeps some of SoCal. I really think PAC needs UNLV and just make PAC uh, championship event, a party in Vegas. It already is. But again, UNLV has been talked about a lot on this show, right? What is the value of UNLV? Yeah, I don't know either. Um, I have no idea. And um, I love Vegas. Vegas is, um, I think Vegas and Pac-12 country is absolutely a, a huge, a huge market. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. But I, I don't know. think it, I don't think it, I don't think it moves the needle in the Pac-12. I just don't think there's a reason, dude. That's they, the problem. They already not a own reason. Vegas. Yeah. They already own it. Uh, McKenna Tech Dan says, living in former Pac-12 country, I love all the Pac-12 dumpster fire conversations I get. Their arrogance is biting them in the rear now. It is. You know. It is. And thank you for the four ninety nine. It is. I don't know how else you say it. I really don't. Tom says, I like having gray names. Gets new, uh, gets new opinions into the mix. So you like having non-members commenting. That's what he's saying, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jeremy Callahan says, why are you drinking Minute Maid when you should have exclusively chugged bucked up because my wife does not allow me to belch uh that's not a, allowed to hear that. yeah we're not allowed to belch anymore so yeah. there's even though that was one of the greatest moments of all time on this program yeah that, that was uh, one of the best if things you I've missed it here. a couple of weeks ago i chugged a bucked up and just belted just so you out. can go to pound town i belted out the man anthem and it was dude <laughs> it was a flex like <laughs> It did not smell good. Uh, Jaron Eccles <laughs> says, everyone needs to realize as the show gets bigger, the more people comment. Don't lose your mind if your comment didn't make it on the show. Just appreciate being here. Love this show. Thanks, Jaron. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate you, Jaron. Um, Mr. Preston says, on a hot day, lemonade is the best. That's it right. Is. That's right. It totally is. Uh, McKenna Tech Dan says, leaving non-members out of the comments, is it even possible to gift memberships if those people aren't in the chat to accept them? It's really not. It's really not. I, Listen, we'll open the floodgates again if you want us to. Like, but you just can't have it both ways. I mean, you know, if you if you want to see gray names, we can do that. But but it just opens the absolute you know wave of like thousands of comments.